Hello. It is so wonderful to see you today. Today we are going to have um, a little bit of education, a little bit of an explanation of a product that we use here and uh, it is called toilet paper. And more often than not, at least here in the United States, you're going to find it in a roll like this. This is a new roll of toilet paper. It has, you can touch it. It has never been used. And you can see that it's little tiny sheets of paper. Remember we discussed paper and paper can be made different ways with different uh, blends of materials. Toilet paper also goes by uh, other names like um, bath tissue, bathroom tissue, um, partly because some people think the term toilet paper is a little uh, harsh or crude. They like to use something that sounds a little more appealing. Bath tissue sounds a little nicer. You can see here that this is a roll that has been almost used up. Inside the roll is a little piece of paper. And the paper comes off like this. You can see that it just comes down like that. And you can touch it. It's very thin. You can, that's right, take, feel the edges of it. You can feel how thin that is. It's very thin. And here it's torn so that you can see that this particular roll of toilet paper has two layers. It has different plies. There is one ply, two ply, three ply. There are even toilet papers in some part of the world, some parts of the world that have six plies, six different layers must be incredible. I don't know. We don't have any around here that I'm aware of that's that thick. <laughs> but um, the layers separate. As you can see, you can just pull them apart. They come apart like that. And they just, they just fall apart. And you can see then that the layer, you can actually kind of see my fingers through there. So the paper on the roll like this. And another thing that you may have already noticed about toilet paper is that it has what we are going to call perforations. That is where, if you can see, there little, there's a line right here in the, in the pattern. It kind of has a little floral pattern. It looks like little flowers in there. That's called quilting. It's quilting. But there's a line that goes here. And you come down a little ways and there's another line and you go a little further and there's another line and it's going to repeat throughout the roll. The toilet paper has these little lines and those are perforations. I'm going to show you what they are for. When you grab the toilet paper like this, you can pull it apart and it tears. Look at that. You can tear one, absolutely. Let me um, separate this section. Now look at it closely. Right in the middle is the perforation, see? You grab that part. I'm going to hold this and we're going to pull it apart. Hold it. You have to find the perforation. Hold it just there. Now pull. Oh, it's all right. It's okay. It often doesn't tear perfectly, but that's all right. And again, you can see the two ply, the two layers of this toilet paper. Are you okay with that term? Or would you rather, would you rather call it bathroom tissue or bath tissue? Okay. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the history of toilet paper. I know how you love to learn um, the origin of things and, and the history of different items that we use here. Um, so let's read. I have some, some little cards that I have prepared ahead of time uh, that helps you learn a little bit about toilet paper. Some things that might be interesting to know. First of all, the first documented use of toilet paper was in the 6th century AD in early medieval China. It did not start here. It started in China a long, long time ago. 
And you might also wonder, um, was toilet paper, has it always been like this? Um, or is this what we have always used? It is definitely not. Um, in the past, wealthy people uh, would wipe themselves with wool, lace, or hemp. And when I say wipe themselves, that gets down to the basic function of toilet paper. The primary reason for which it was invented and the primary reason for which people would have it. After you go to the bathroom, you may need to wipe yourself for cleanliness. And people find toilet paper very useful for that. So that is the main purpose. It's That's why they call it bathroom tissue because um, it's tissues. It's like little sheets of tissue paper that you keep in your bathroom for that purpose. But as we will discuss later, there are other potential uses for toilet paper. Not only toilet paper, but the roll on the inside. And we'll talk about that too. But when you are talking about um, in the past, in history, uh, things that people would use like toilet paper, um, like Wealthy people, like we we're saying, would use wool or lace or hemp as a type of toilet paper. But the less wealthy people could not afford to do that. So they would use things like rags, wood shavings, um, leaves, that's, that's misspelled, grass, hay, stone, sand, moss, maize, uh, ferns, fruit skins, seashells or corn cobs. So they they could not afford wool and lace and hemp for that. So they would use things that might be more readily available like leaves or grass or things like that. But things began to change for us in the 18th century when it came to things that we would use like toilet paper. The rise of publishing uh, by the 18th century led to the the rise of newspapers and cheap cheap editions of popular books for cleansing. Um, so you started to have books became more readily available uh, in the past. Um, only very wealthy people could afford books. But over time it became less expensive to produce those items and less wealthy people had access to them. Uh, and newspapers, and when they were done with them, they might use them as a type of toilet paper. Uh, in many parts of the world, and this is still true, people consider using water a much cleaner and more sanitary practice than using uh, paper. And that is still true today. So depending on the different areas of earth that you go to, you may not find toilet paper like this. You may find what's called a bidet where you use water to clean yourself. Um, typically though in the United States, uh, bidets are not a common thing that you're going to find. In most areas you're going to find this if you come here. Here's something else that's kind of interesting. Joseph Gaetti I'm not sure if that's pronounced correct, correctly. Gaiety is widely credited with being the inventor of modern, commercially commercially available toilet paper in the United States. His name is Joseph Gaiety, and he was um, believed to be one of the first people to make it widely available to people in the U.S. Gaiety's paper was first introduced in 1957. I'm sorry, that's actually supposed to be 1857 and was available as late as the 1920s. That should be 1857. I messed up. So that was a long time ago, but it really, in the grand scheme of things, was not that long ago that it was available. Gaiety's medicated paper was sold in packages of flat sheets watermarked with the inventor's name. And it was called Gaetti's Medicated Paper. And it did not come in rolls like this. It was in sheets, kind of like tissue paper. And you just had individual sheets instead of paper on a roll. So, as I said, there are different uses for toilet paper. We have the one use, the main, the main reason people would buy it is for use in the bathroom. 
rolls off like this and you can see the quilting if you look at it up close you can see the quilting and the little flowers on here it's made they're trying to make it look thicker the quilting is just where a machine will stamp the paper in a pattern and it creates this pattern a lot of companies will use this in, att in an attempt to make the, pa the paper look thicker and they, they will brag about their quilting and make it sound like they're doing something to make it softer and thicker so it will be more pleasurable to use than just a hard paper but it really doesn't actually do anything to make it softer it's just something that is visually appealing and when we think of quilts we think of something thick so they use the term to make us think it's something wonderful when you get down to the end of the roll it has a light glue that is applied to the roll to make the paper stick to the roll sometimes it comes off cleanly sometimes it does not you can see it's tearing as I pull it but I want to show you the roll itself so we're going to pull this paper away as much as we can you see it's stuck on there but you can see you just get the general idea this is paperboard it's just like a thick paper and this is the roll itself that the paper they have machines that can wind the paper around the roll they don't do it by hand it's done by machine and it's very straight as you can see here it's very straight I don't think you would have much luck trying to do that by hand so it's done by machine but inside here is this roll like this and it's definitely thicker than the paper itself it's made of a different type of paper it's a thicker paper and these rolls typically uh, people throw them away but you can save these these are useful for different things one thing you can do with these is you can cut them if you want but if you have a long cord that you want to keep bundled up like if you have an extension cord or something like that you can use a toilet paper roll to wrap around the cord and it will keep it nice and bundled and keep it bundled together these also work really well for um, wrapping paper if you have a roll of wrapping paper you know after you open it it tries to unroll and it gets all messed up so after you open it you can cut a toilet paper roll you can use multiple rolls for one roll of paper cut it this way just cut it open and then you can open it up a little bit and fold it over the roll of wrapping paper in different spots on the roll and it will keep it from unrolling and it will hold your wrapping paper nice and tight so it isn't damaged and it helps when you're storing your wrapping paper to keep it nice and neat for the next time that you want to use it and there are tons of ideas if you look on um, on the internet which we discussed what the internet was earlier you can look on the internet and find, especially on Pinterest, you can find tons of ideas and crafts and things that you can do with these. They have ideas, um, like if you want to do crafts with your kids, they have tons of ideas for uh, toilet paper rolls, all kinds of neat things you can make. So it's definitely worth checking out if you feel like saving them. Uh, most people will just throw them away. So we have our perforations in our paper. Now here we have a square but is it perfectly square well let's check I just happen to have a ruler right here now let's see we can measure the toilet paper like this we're gonna hold it here oops drop it hold it this way and it looks like it is four inches wide goes all the way over to four so then we're gonna measure it this way and I'm just holding it up against the ruler and it looks like it is four points uh, it's about 4.1 not like it's not really four and a quarter it's almost four and a quarter it's just wide so it's not completely square but it's that's I would say that's about an average size 
of toilet paper in the United States. It's usually about four, about four inches square. Some are smaller, some may be a little bit bigger, but most of them are about that size. Now you might wonder, if people keep toilet paper in their bathrooms, where do they put it? Where did, did they set it? Do they set it on the floor? Or where do they put it? <clears throat> well, we have something that, um, and there are different types. I'm going to show you. We have what's called a toilet paper roll, a toilet paper holder, like a roll holder. And I'm going to show you some pictures of different ways that you can keep your toilet paper in the bathroom. Of course, you can always, you can always just take the roll and set it on the back of the toilet on the tank. If you want to, you can just set it there. You don't have to have a holder for your toilet paper, but most people do. A lot of times it's a very simple little holder that might be attached to the wall near the toilet. Um, you want it to be where you can reach it, but you can also get more elaborate holders like this one. This one you will see, it has, it's like a rod right here and that will run through the hole in the toilet paper. It runs right through this hole right here. But it runs right through there and it's going to hang in such a way that it is not pressed up against the wall. And you can pull it down. There's a goose flying over. <laughs> that's a geese. That's a goose. That's not toilet paper. It's Canadian geese. We'll talk about them on another day. We're talking about toilet paper now. You want it far enough away from the wall that it will roll freely when you pull it down. But this one has an interesting feature. On these parts, we have drink holders. Um, this would be nice, I guess, if you had um, a bathroom in a bar or somewhere where people might have a drink in their hand that they didn't want to leave behind, like you don't want to leave your drink sitting out while you go to the restroom. It has a little place for a wine glass or a, a can like that, and you can just set it there or put your little wine glass right there. That's an interesting, interesting little holder. Or you could go with one that's um, practical in another way. This one is one that someone made. They wove this basket and then put a stick through here at the top. You see there are holes in the basket and the stick goes through. And the toilet paper goes through the stick. Down here in the basket though, we have storage space for extra rolls. So it's very handy. You have the one here and you have available extra rolls if you need them. And whenever you run out, you could just take one of these, slide the stick out and put it on there like that. So this will hold the roll that is currently being used and it holds extra rolls. So you would keep that near the toilet. So it is handy. This is another version of that idea. Um, a little more utilitarian. This one is made of metal, as you can see, and it stands fairly high. And the roll is up here on this little piece that sticks out up here, and it comes down. And then we have this basket here where you can rest. You can stack your extra rolls of toilet paper and just put them right in there and see that the basket is open over here on this side, so you can reach in and add rolls for later or pull out a roll for now, however you want to do it. And that takes care of having the toilet paper available for use and extra storage for other rolls. It's very handy. Now this one I think would be wonderful in a public restroom if you were, um, because a lot of times uh, if you go into a public restroom, like say you have your cell phone in your pocket and you don't want it to fall out, there's nowhere to set it in the stall in the restroom. This toilet paper holder has a little shelf. I really like that. And you can just set anything there that you need to just set down for a minute. You can just set it there. And it also, of course, has the place for the roll of toilet paper. So I really like this idea as I said, especially for public restrooms. Um, some people call them washrooms or just bathrooms. I think it really depends on the part of the world that you live in. Um, 
when I lived in Illinois for a while, which is a state. Um, and they called them, a lot of people up there called them washrooms, which kind of confused me. I never heard anyone call it a washroom. But down here where I live, they typically just call them restrooms. If some people, some people like to have fun with their, um, their stuff. They like to do funny little things. This is an, an example of that. <laughs> this is a toilet paper roll that looks like the back half of a dog. And it's like, it's like the toilet paper is coming out of the dog. It looks like it's going straight into the toilet. <laughs> um, but that's kind of cute. Um, so when you pull it, it's like pulling it out of the backside of a dog. <laughs> It's just a little plastic piece, and I guess it's mounted to the wall in some way that you can take it off and put on a fresh roll, but I thought that was a clever idea. Now, you can store your toilet paper in unconventional ways. You can use things that may not have been intended to be toilet paper uh, holders, such as a child's toy. Like right here, we have this looks like a toy dinosaur sitting on the toilet tank. This is part of the actual, uh, the actual toilet itself. This holds the water for the uh, toilet. And it looks like someone just sat a little toy back here on the back of the tank. And it's like, it's a, um, it looks like a Brachiosaurus. And he has a roll of toilet paper on his neck. Because <laughs> they have long necks. And he's holding the toilet paper. <laughs> so you can use, you can use all kinds of different things to hold your toilet paper. And here are, these are three examples. Like again here we have the one with the shelf and then hanging down here we have the little piece, the little metal piece that holds the roll of toilet paper. And we even have a little decoration sitting on the shelf. The shelf looks bigger than the other one. I like this one a lot. This one's very whimsical. It looks like an old Polaroid camera and the, the picture would come out the front. But in this case, instead of a picture, it's toilet paper. <laughs> That's really cute. I would actually put that up in my bathroom. And here we have a, a very unique toilet paper holder. It looks like a tree, you see? And the rolls of toilet paper are like little leaves or flowers on the tree. So people get really creative with, um, with their toilet paper sometimes. Now, in the United States, at least, we have a very, very wide variety of different, uh, different toilet paper. Some are very expensive, some are very inexpensive. On the cheaper end of the scale, we have this here. Now, this is a four pack, one, two, three, four, a four pack of bathroom tissue. See, they call it bathroom tissue instead of toilet paper because, again, it sounds a little less crude, I guess. Um, it's a little more appealing, I guess, to the mind to just call it bathroom tissue. And this is a generic bath tissue that I purchased at Walmart. But you can see that they still have the quilted appearance on here. These are two ply sheets and it looks like they have little roses quilted all over them. I got this for 67 cents at Walmart, which was pretty decent. Uh, and they are four, inch, four inches square. Now this is very a very light package. I can tell you that this will not last very long. There's actually not a lot of paper on here and you can see that if you look here. You can see there's a lot of space uh, between the sheets where they are rolled onto the roll. There's a lot of space. Uh, it's not packed as tightly as say this one. You can see that these sheets are packed on here more tightly. Um, it makes the roll look bigger than it really is to leave that space in there. But you can get it very cheaply, less than a dollar, for these four rolls of toilet paper. But they don't have a brand name, it's just a generic pack of uh, toilet paper. Now that was two ply. This is an example of one ply bath tissue right here. This is a brand that has been around for a long time. It is Scott Tissue. Um, let's see. I was going to see what they call it. 
They call it, they also call it, well, they call it bathroom tissue down here, and they tell you that it is unscented. Um, and just like other types of toilet paper, it is septic safe, which means if you are using a septic tank, it is not going to damage your septic tank. It is designed to degrade and not cause problems with your septic system. Now these, these rolls are one ply, and each roll has a thousand sheets on it. Um, now this paper is very, very thin. And a lot of people, you can see it's packed tighter too. A lot of people don't like the thin one ply paper, but some people do. It's something that people actually get in arguments about sometimes, like on morning radio or whatever, people will call in and debate different types of toilet paper. A lot of people, you know, they don't talk about it, but a lot of people have very uh, strong preferences for toilet paper. <laughs> I really don't. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, but this is an example of a one-ply toilet paper. It is very, very thin. So I think you use more of it, so I don't really know that it's saving you any money to get this, but a lot of people really like it. <clears throat> now here is an example of a higher, a more expensive toilet paper. This is, and you can see that they really, they really boast about the fact that it's quilted. This is Northern Ultra Plush, three cushiony and absorbent layers, bathroom tissue. And it says it's a bonus. We get over 300 free sheets. So that's awesome. This contains 12 rolls of toilet paper and they are four inches square. You can see the rolls up here. They're quite thick. There's a lot of paper on there. And these are double rolls. Um, that's where they say they have more sheets on there, but the roll was the same size. They say it's like 28 regular rolls. I don't really know if that's true, but um, this, this paper has three layers. And it's quite luxurious. Very, very soft. And again, some people have very strong preferences for their toilet paper. Um, some people don't worry about it. Back here on the back, they even have some information for you. Persnickety about the good life. <laughs> Confession, we can be a little obsessive about all the tiny details that go into our products. After all, crafting Quilted Northern Ultra Plush to upgrade your bathroom experience matters. That's why it features, and then they even list things about your toilet paper. I'm not sure who reads this, but they have features. Three cushiony and absorbent layers for ultimate comfort that still offer a worry-free, septic safe, safe solution. Our patented technology that delivers the softness you want while cutting down on what you don't. Lint. And some papers do kind of have a linty, like stuff comes off them. Responsibly sourced, renewable materials that meet the standards of the Sustainable Forestry Initiative, so it's good for the earth. And they have a website, quiltednorthern.com, and a phone number. And it shows you on the back the, uh, the double roll. It's like two plus regular rolls. It is quilted, definitely. You can see the quilting down here. Like a little crisscross pattern. No flowers. And in the past, in the past, you can actually get uh, toilet paper in different colors. Like you could get pastel pink or blue or green, and you could coordinate it with your bathroom. I remember being able to buy toilet paper and uh, facial tissues like Kleenex in different colors, but you can't anymore. Um, they did away with that and it's all white now. So here's another option. Now this is not your typical toilet paper. This, these are flushable wipes. Now they come in a little package like this. See? And it's almost like a baby wipe that you would use for a, a little person. It opens right here. There's this little plastic piece right here that you pull open. And there's a seal that you pull off. And you have moistened wipes in here that you can use, and they are flushable. 
These individual wipes, you can see they don't come on a roll. They're just individual wipes that you pull out one at a time. These were first available in the UK back in the mid to late 90s, and then they came to the US in uh, 2001. These are from Cottonelle, which is another brand of, of toilet paper. Flushable cleansing cloths, fresh care, and it says they have clean ripple texture for better use. Um, I don't use these. Um, I just wanted to get a pack and show you so you knew that when it comes to using toilet paper, we do have other options. So if you ever run across this, you will not, you will know what it is. And right here, you can see how you can pull them out one at a time. So you may run across some people who use these. Um, personally, I don't feel the need to use those. I, I, toilet paper is fine. But some people really like them. And they, I, I do, I have heard that they contribute to uh, clogs in sewer systems. So um, some places I think have done away with them or have talked about it. Now there are different uses for toilet paper instead of the traditional use. Um, you can use them, unfortunately some people, like kids, might take a little piece of it, roll it up and put a little spit on it and shoot it through a straw and it sticks to stuff. Um, like they'll shoot it and put it up on the ceiling. I know at my kids' elementary school you can actually see um, in the hallway near the bathroom where kids have done that. They've shot them up on the ceiling and no one's ever gotten them down. They're just little little blobs up there of little pieces of toilet paper. That is, I guess you could say that's a use for toilet paper. Um, if you go to a bridal shower, if someone's getting married, there may be a game where you split up into teams and you use toilet paper to make a wedding, a wedding gown and whoever makes the prettiest gown and veil wins. So you could use toilet paper to play, uh, play. People sometimes use them for games. Or you could do something, and this is frowned upon, but it is something that a lot of people do, especially in their youth. It's called TPing, toilet paper, where they will go to someone's house with a bunch of rolls of toilet paper, typically when they're not home, and it's a prank, where you will unfold the toilet paper, you grab the end, and then you you hold it and then throw the roll like you will just throw it and it will just launch this strip of toilet paper and you like you can do it over their house in their trees and you just do it over and over until there are tons of strands of toilet paper hanging from their trees their house you can TP a house trees a car whatever you want to do and then you run away before you get caught because <laughs> you can get in trouble for that. And then the person that you do it to is going to have to clean all that up. It's not really a prank I recommend, but it does happen with young people, particularly around Halloween or if you have rival high school football teams, they might TP the other school principal's house after the game or something. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not encouraged, but it does happen. Toilet paper is good if um, if you have nicks from shaving. You can just pull off a little piece and stick it to whatever spot. If you have a little spot that's bleeding, you can just take a little toilet piece, piece of toilet paper and stick it on there. You can do that. Um, there are a lot of different uses for toilet paper. Um, in a pinch, you can use it as packing material if you have to... Uh, mail a package and you want to kind of pad it a little bit you could take layers of toilet paper and wrap the item or use it as filler in the box so the item doesn't move around in the box as much um, and, and of course again like with the um, with the rolls you can go onto the internet or Pinterest or whatever and find other uses for toilet paper but um, it is a common item if you're going to be amongst people you are going to encounter toilet paper and I just wanted you to be aware of it so um, it's not a foreign concept um, one of the things that you might hear is a, a debate about which way to put the toilet paper on the roll 
You can have it with a paper facing out like this, like if this is the roll, or you can have it under where it's going to roll out this way. Like that. So you have this way or this way. And different people prefer to have it roll different ways. Believe it or not, that is something that people will can feel pretty strongly about, about the right way to do it. <laughs> um, I personally, me, well, I prefer that it goes this way. This is what I prefer. But there is one problem. If you have cats in your home and you have it facing this way, sometimes they will reach up with their claws. And I have a cat who does this we we'll reach up with our claws and grab the toilet paper and pull it off the roll and shred it and you can end up with an entire roll of toilet paper on the floor in the bathroom but if you turn it this way it seems to help keep them from doing that or at least for my cat if I turn it this way she doesn't she may pull a little bit off but she doesn't pull as much off um, so cats like to play with it too I have one cat in particular who loves to shred toilet paper it's one of her favorite things to do <laughs> So, um, like many other things with humans, you know, we have things that have one main purpose, but we are definitely an inventive and creative lot, and we can find other ways to use different items and things, uh, you know, we can find ways that it can help in other, in other areas instead of just the one area where it was intended. So it's, it's a cool thing about humans that we can do that. So anyway... I want to thank you so much for coming to look at this. Um, I hope it was informative. So when you do encounter it, you can feel more confident that you know more about it and it won't seem so foreign to you. Okay, great. Thank you again for coming and I will see you again soon.